Everything that you need to play Megacorp with is inside the 62 card starter deck. The contents of the deck are listed behind. To begin playing, sort the cards into three piles denoted by the symbol on the back. The red symbol is for your founder and your business. The green symbol is for your resource deck. And of course, the blue symbol is for your main deck. You might also want to use dice to play Megacorp, using one die to specify the amount of money that you have remaining, and the other four dice to keep track of how much resource trade that you have. Of course, if you're a real businessman, you can use the power of your mind. Now, first and foremost, right, this is of course your founder, this is your entrepreneur. You actually have one of these in play for free. Now, just to explain to you the elements that make up the card, first and foremost, this is the valuation of the card, is how much money it costs for you to actually play the card. Some cards have secondary costs, which are in trades, but we're not gonna talk about it right now. This is the super types, what type is the car, whether they are a character, whether they are a uh, piece of equipment or whether they are building a location. But here's the thing, uh, there are only two real kinds of uh, cards in the game. Assets, which is anything which is permanent and stays in play, and events, which can be played anytime, even on your opponent's turn. Now, at the bottom of the card, as you can see here, all right, are four traits. Now, this is IQ, which is represented by a head. Okay, this is value of two. This is EQ, which is, of course, a measure of your charisma personal charm, aesthetical beauty. Uh, this compass here actually refers to MQ, morality quotient, which is basically how subject subjectable to uh, corruption or bribery a particular character or an asset is. And uh, last but not least, this is BQ, which is represented by a uh, heart rate monitor, it's green. And uh, it stands for body quotient, which is basically the martial prowess, how strong, structural integrity, and basically uh, how much uh, somebody can deal out in terms of physical damage. Okay, let's begin the game. You begin the game with 10 million credits. This is your money. And if you have no credits by the end of any player's turn, you lose the game. Your business is also a very important card in Megacorp. If your business will be defeated in combat or bought by another player, you lose the game. If your business has no cards docked to it by the end of your own turn, you lose the game as well. Place your business down and your founder can be docked any of four ways. When you play any card in the game, even for your business and for your founder, you need to dock them next to each other. That means this is a legal dock, so is this, so is this. You can't dock cards halfway, you can't do this. In, in an early prototype version of the game, we allow people to do it halfway, but it doesn't work that way anymore. You have to do it this way. Now, cards which are placed like this, this is an illegal dock, and at the end of the turn, cards which are not legally docked to your business are discarded. As for a matter of fact, if your business doesn't have any cards docked to it, at the end of any turn, sorry, at the end of your turn, you lose the game as well. Okay, so when you start the game, basically, you have your business and you have your founder. Now, let's take a look at the rest of the deck. Now, the thing is that you have your resource cards denoted by your green backs over here. Now, these cards basically go onto a pile, shuffled, of course, face down on the left hand side. And this is, of course, your main deck. Now, these cards basically are also shuffled and placed face down on the right hand side. Now, what you want to do basically when you play the game is uh, you actually have to draw five cards at the beginning of your turn. Now, there's a very, very simple turn process in Megacorp. Now, these are the cards in my hand. You do not show these to your opponent. You just keep them away. And uh, what's going to happen now is that uh, when I start the game, the first thing that's going to happen is that we're going to go through the turn sequence. There are four sequences in the turn. A, B, C, and D. A stands for accounting. B stands for buy. C stands for combat or challenge. And D stands for divest. And of course, there's E. Now, during your A phase, you get to reveal the top card of your resource deck. Now you can choose to play this card, this costs 2 million as per the valuation up here. And of course this card is pretty good, it's a consumer, it's a staple in the game. And you gain 1 million cash flow each turn, that means every turn you're going to get 1 million dollars. Okay? I choose not to play this card, it goes to the bottom of my resource deck as so. Okay? Opponents cannot buy the top card of your resource deck. During your A phase, you also get to draw a card from your main deck. Now, you do not need to reveal this card, you simply need to put it into your hand, okay? In this, in this uh, instance, I actually managed to draw a unique mutation event. And uh, just bear in mind that uh, events can be played anytime, even on your opponent's turns. 
Now, let's go through this quickly. Now, this is uh, my very first turn. I begin the game with 10 million uh, in money. And of course, your money and your life are one and the same in this game of Megacorp. Now, for starters, basically, during the A phase, I would actually have five sub steps. The first step, of, of, course, of course, is the uh, cash flow. Now, if I have cards which generate money, they would actually have the cash flow ability and they generally generate one million of currency per turn. Followed by the upkeep phase. Any card which has the word upkeep, you have to pay that much upkeep, one million, two million, three million, and so on. Some upkeeps are paid in trades, but I should explain that a little bit later. Okay, and following that, you turn any card which is upside down the right side up now this is called disengaging okay this is engaged this is disengaged very simple okay now in the following step after you get your cash flow your upkeep disengage then you reveal the top card of your resource deck now you can choose to play this card now if you don't put it to the bottom of your resource deck and then draw a card from your main deck now because in this demonstration uh, we are the first player of a two-person game you don't get to draw during a multiplayer game or from the second turn onwards everybody gets to draw during this part so just to be clear okay it is cash flow upkeep disengage reveal the top card draw a card okay that's how it works now B is buy now the, f the cool thing about megacorp is that you can buy cards from your hand you can buy cards basically from your opponent as long as the card is upside down you can make a purchase similarly if your cards are upside down they are vulnerable to be bought by other players if somebody buys your card for instance you get the money that means you get the money which is equal to the valuation of the card okay once again if you're not clear which one is the valuation the valuation is this number up here now some cards basically have secondary costs like this okay that means they have a monetary value as well as a secondary trade value. Now, how do you pay for this? Now, supposing I want to play this card right now. I mean, I can play cards from my hand. I can play cards from my opponent's upside down cards. I can buy them from my opponent's network and I can buy the top card of any discard pile, otherwise known as an open market pile. So I'm having difficulty focusing the camera right now. It's okay. Okay, so the thing is that uh, what I'm gonna do now is uh, if I wanted to play this card called Augmented Metabolism, okay? Now, this gives a advantage to my founder which happens to be Rama, the incarnate hierarch, and everything here is a mutation event. So what's going to happen here is that I'm going to turn my business upside down. I can choose any one of these four traits to produce. For example, since I have 10 of everything, right? 10 IQ, 10 EQ, 10 MQ, as well as 10 BQ. When I flip this card upside down, I'm going to produce 10 BQ, and I use two of those BQs to play augmented metabolism and spend two million, leaving me with eight million left over. So this card causes me the bond to target character. Okay, and it gains pay three BQ, move this card permanently. Moving means that I can actually move this card to any square, anywhere, as long as it's a legal dock, and I can actually move it into my opponent's network if I choose to as well. Okay, so I've played that card now. And uh, supposing I want to play an additional card called Rapid Tissue Regeneration. I can do this basically by using another two BQ. I had generated 10. I used two for, the, uh, for that augmented rep metabolism. Now I'm going to spend another one more, leaving me with seven. I'm going to attach this to her. See, it's bond to target character. And it permanently gains one BQ regenerate. Now you know that Rama can already regenerate by sacrificing other creatures or characters. Sorry. So let me put this underneath there. And... Now, it comes to the next part of my turn, which of course is challenge. Now, in this game, there's no summoning sickness, there's no delay. You can attack immediately with characters that you have placed into play. Now, only characters can attack. Now, when they do attack though, you have to designate a target and characters can attack any card, not just other characters. Subsequently, I reach the next phase of my turn, which is divest. I can sell any one card, a, pay, a card which is already paid for in my network, okay? so. At the end of the uh, divest phase, if I choose not to sell anything, basically I'm going to 